let's now move on here on times now we are also doing an assessment of the kind of economic impact that could be there because of this second wave of coronavirus in fact india's active case count currently is double of what we saw at the peak of the first wave last year in september with close to 3 lakh cases coming every day it clearly shows that there are around 204 people who are testing positive for coronavirus across the country every minute so one thing is very very clear viewers that it is becoming a tsunami now the way case count is increasing every single day uh, it's no longer just a wave and uh, it is quite deadly as well we all have seen it with the kind of incidents that have been reported from different parts of the country and uh, this has come at a time when our economic indicators had just started low looking better green shoots had started emerging in the economy so what happens next in fact what does the current wave of restrictions really mean for the indian economy and uh, today we are joined by mr sanjeev sanyal who is the principal economic advisor to ministry of finance to help us understand how is the government looking at this second wave of corona virus and uh, what could really be the economic impact of this one mr sanyal it's a pleasure to have you on the show today thank you very much for joining us here on times now uh, i want to first begin by asking you in your assessment how alarming is the current situation with migrant exodus also uh, beginning once again uh, how crucial is this for the economic recovery that india had started seeing just now um obviously the second wave uh, has seen a very sharp uh, spike in the number of positive cases and clearly um the government um, is watching it very carefully and responding as soon as it can on in a, on a multiple fronts um, um but i think here it's important to understand uh, that the response that we are doing is significantly different from what we did in the first round um and uh, you would have heard uh, the honorable prime minister yesterday say that we do not want to do a generalized lockdown um uh, although of course there will be micro lockdowns at the uh, state level or even municipal level uh so i think it's important that you understand the thinking behind this very clearly the point about the first lockdown which we did about a year ago was that at that stage we did not have um any information about the nature of the pandemic at that stage we didn't know who it affected how it spread and what its um symptoms were we also at that time did not have pp kits testing kits uh, or a vaccine so things are significantly different this time around so last time we were in a situation of utter uncertainty so the best we could do at that time was to shut things down while we gathered um information and created some sort of a response this time around we do have a lot of information about the nature of this disease yes it keeps mutating but we do have a lot of information uh we do have uh you know ppe kits um uh you know we we know that we have to arrange quickly a lot of uh, oxygen for example and um even in the general public there is a lot of information about this so i think the response this time has to be about ramping up things like ppe kits testing oxygen and the vaccination of course rather than um what we had to do last time per force uh, which was to shut things down while we gathered information so the same strategy leads to two different uh, outcomes um you know, given the information that we have uh, so that is why we are doing it this way and of course there is another important reason is that when you do know what to do then you have to get the whole economy to respond to it which is we we need you know the factories to be running to be producing the oxygen to be able to produce the ppe kits we need the rest of the system to be able to support the um uh the health sector and so on so at this juncture a generalized lockdown would not in fact be all that helpful so same situation perhaps even more uh, difficult in terms of numbers this time but the response has to be different because these the uncertain the the information situation that we have right. now is very different from the last time So the sense that you uh, give to us is that probably we are not going to see a repeat of uh, the kind of impact that the Indian 
Indian economy had because of coronavirus pandemic in the year 2020, at least now. Uh, we are better prepared to handle this particular crisis. But Mr. Sanyal, uh, I want to ask you, you know, we are getting visuals of migrant laborers already beginning to return back home. We've got visuals from Maharashtra, Rajasthan, Gujarat, National Capital and a few other states as well. Uh, the services sector is also getting impacted because of these uh, localized lockdowns or restrictions that we are seeing. Now, today we are expected to hear a decision from Maharashtra government. They could come back to that lockdown strategy again. That's what state is mulling. Uh, Delhi is under a one-week lockdown. Jharkhand has got a one-week lockdown already in place. UP has got a uh, weekend lockdown in place. So what do these localized lockdowns really mean for sectors like, uh, you know, uh, restaurants, uh, aviation, you know, the services sector specifically? Because uh, that they, these people are losing their jobs. Clearly, uh, sectors that require face-to-face -face interaction um, will get affected by this. Um, and there is no choice uh, in those uh, situations if there is a, a localized lockdown uh, for uh, having to put a restriction on these sectors and disrupt them. So, uh, yes, there is a, there are, will be difficulty for many of these sectors, which obviously struggled last year as well due to the lockdown. But overall, I think the impact on the economy will be much, much, uh, much, much less because, as I said, significant parts of the economy, in fact, most of the economy will be uh, kept running through this cycle. Um, as I said, obviously, it, there will be uh, impact on those specific sectors where there is face to face, um, you know, uh, interaction and and health uh, uh, factors will now have to unfortunately uh, override uh, keeping those sectors open. But um, as I said, um, we have a much better sense of how this uh, uh, virus spreads and how this uh, pandemic uh, um, uh, impacts uh, health. Uh, so I think our response to this, uh, this time around will be, um, uh, and you can already see that, uh, it will be uh, quite strong. And uh, this situation should be brought back into um, uh, you know, normalcy uh, quickly enough. Has the government started working on some kind of a, a stimulus to help the sectors which are going to get impacted deeply, which have already started witnessing the impact? Uh, what is it uh, that you are going to advise to the government and what's really the thinking right now? Uh, I think... When we had the first round, I explained this many, many times. There is no point in trying to uh, use stimulus to reinflate uh, sectors um, that are being held down because of health reasons. So uh, 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 the demand stimulus in a sector uh, that is being uh, restrained on the supply side is not a meaningful response, uh, nor is it a meaningful response to have these grand uh, one-time packages. Uh, our response throughout has been to do the following thing, which is to do systematic, medium-sized packages responding to the situation. So as and when we need to, we will look into doing another one if it is ne needed. Uh, if you, we've done that in the past, and if necessary, we'll do it into the future as well. Uh, we have been saying right from the beginning, this is not a sprint, it's a marathon. So that is why, unlike perhaps uh, many other governments around the world, we have not always fired all our ammunition because we always saved enough that if necessary, we can do it again. But to try and reinflate sectors that have been closed down for health reasons uh, prematurely is certainly not helpful. Okay. Uh, so, uh, at the same time, Mr. Sanyal, we are seeing that international rating agencies and uh, rating agencies here in India have already started revising India's economic outlook for the current financial year. While everyone expected India to be the fastest growing economy in the world when we all thought that probably we have defeated coronavirus, of course, that was the thought in January and February. Situation has changed considerably. Uh, is the Indian government also planning to change the outlook? What is uh, your view, are we likely to see a double-digit growth still or uh, you think, uh, you know, a complete different outlook is something that we now have to look forward to? No, uh, if you will remember, uh, the Indian government's forecasts have always been conservative. We have, we had uh, been forecasting something in the range of 
10 and a half percent in the budget and the economic survey at 11 percent which as you know was significantly below what uh, many uh, international agencies like the IMF had been forecasting so we were always very conservative and we still believe that uh, while there will be some turbulence uh, in in the next few weeks uh, we are quite confident that we will hit our forecasts Right. Uh, Mr. Samyal, uh, before we let you go, I have to ask you about the issue of vaccination as well. Our third phase is going to begin from the 1st of May and we know that the finance ministry has cleared a significant amount as advance to uh, the two vaccine manufacturers in the country. Uh, can you explain to us, uh, uh, you know, uh, how is the government really going to help the vaccine manufacturers uh, ramp up their capacity? What is uh, the government's vaccine strategy really? And uh, is this money that's being given to the vaccine makers going from the money that was allocated in the budget or is it going uh, you know separately uh, that was given to ministry of health how uh, how is the finance really being managed here for vaccinations well i'm not the expert on vaccination and its production uh, so you'll have to ask somebody else uh, all that i can say is that uh, resources were needed in order to deal with the both the capital expenditure as well as the working capital requirements of the um, the large manufacturers, uh, the two large manufacturers, and those resources have been provided so that they can ramp up uh, uh, production um, very sharply. And, uh, um, you know, uh, from what I hear, that both, both the producers are confident that they can ramp it up. Now, exactly how it is um, accounted for in the budget, I am not certain, I must admit. All right, uh, Mr. Sanyal, but appreciate you joining us uh, here on Times Now and sharing with us your outlook as far as the current wave of the pandemic is concerned and the possible impact that it could really have on the Indian economy. The sense that you also give us is that probably the impact is not going to be as bad as it was last year. We are better prepared to deal with it. I appreciate you joining us uh, here on Times Now. We are going to be slipping into a very short break at this point in time. Lots lined up for you on the other side as well. Stay with us.